when you get a kid that's on that path that you're f fearful of and you can bring him back and he's excited about it, um, that's why I'm here. It's getting me out of trouble. It is. It's helping me. It's helping me on my hockey, my career. I'm hoping one day I'll be in the NHL, but yeah. I look at my grandkids and I, you know, I kind of worry about, you know, what direction they're going to take as they get older. I just find that the drug usage and the alcohol seems to be a big major problem in the area. Sioux Lookout, Northwestern Ontario. A town of 5,000 that isn't really close to anywhere. People here, they look north. In fact, they take pride on being a hub for the remote First Nations spread out across Ontario's boreal forest. And many of the kids from up there go to school here. Sioux Mountain Public. 340 kids in grades one to eight, and 85% of them are Aboriginal. So remember, each person's gonna do it 10 times, then you switch, and then each of This is Steve Dumonsky's grade eight class. <laughs> Leave a little bit more space, so you try and work on those quick reflexes. The class seems normal enough. Kids doing their work. Last one. Put your hand right here and then try and get less than 10. I'll try one more time. But it's actually quite remarkable because until recently, a lot of kids at this school just didn't show up. Oh, there you go, nice eight. Okay, now switch. We have kids that, like I have a few students this year, you're happy that they showed up that morning. You're happy when they walk through the door, whether maybe it's on time or it's at 10.30 in the morning, you're just happy that you've seen them that day for where, how long it is. And I just try, when they come, I know the students who are struggling to be here, so I, when they come, I just try to make them as comfortable as possible. And you got 99 too? The kids call Steve Dumonsky Mr. D. He grew up in Northwestern Ontario. So he understands what living in one of the poorest and most troubled areas in the country can do to you. The boys are over here in the woods getting high on marijuana or crack or whatever it might be. So that's reality. Some of the students, they're being sexually assaulted by family members, community members, people on the street. You know, I've had students in the past, two students in the past, try to commit suicide on a weekend. One tried to commit suicide right after school right here. I, I do, I care about each one of these kids. I care about what happens to them after school, what happens to them during the school. So yeah, I take it personal. And when something happens bad, it hurts. Drugs, alcohol, suicide, these are big problems, complicated ones. But the solution the school board has come up with is surprisingly simple. Get the kids playing hockey. Around the cone. Around the cone. Good. One more. Nice puck control. Good. In fact, they made it part of the curriculum. Grades one to six skate once a week, grades seven and eight twice during the school day. Good, good, good. That's good. The kids don't pay a cent and they get brand new gear. There is a slight catch, of course. If you don't go to school or you don't do your work, you don't get on the ice. It's hard to believe a couple of hours of hockey makes a difference. But Steve tells me it's done exactly that with 13-year-old Jericho Crane. Jericho Crane, yes. Yeah, Jericho. Um, trouble at the start of the year, right? He late all the time, wasn't coming to school regularly, getting some trouble at school, out of school, S hanging out with some older high school kids that were kind of leading them in the wrong direction. One, all the way to 99. I pulled Jericho out of class to ask him how the hockey program's helping him. What was school like for you before hockey, Kevin? I don't know, it's just I wouldn't listen and all that, just slack off, wouldn't do my work, just wouldn't want to even listen and all that. I mean, sometimes I can be like that, but not all the time. And now? Now I listen, do my work. I mean, it's a privilege, not a right, so. What is? Uh, hockey. It's a privilege, not a right. That's what they tell you? Yeah. 
So it's that simple, just putting hockey in front of you and now you're more engaged in school. I can't put it into words, it's just... I find it more easier having hockey in my life with school. Sixth number is 52. Okay. Okay. And Mr. So D embodies both, the classroom and 52. the rink. So we He's Jericho's teacher, but he also had a successful minor league career so and came close to the NHL. With a role model like that, no wonder Jericho's working hard. If you didn't get hockey at school and didn't come to school, what do you think your future was going to be like? I honestly don't know. I'd probably be out of school, being out there and just getting into other stuff, like bad stuff, mischief. Trouble? Yeah. What's the trouble around here? I don't know, it was like drugs and all that, they would keep me out of that. So I'm so lucky I have hockey just to get me away from that stuff. You want a sign that the hockey program's working? These days after school, Jericho's not wandering around getting into trouble. He's out here dreaming of making it. It's Thursday morning, 45 minutes before the bell rings, and already you see the evidence. Kids coming to school. At Sioux Mountain, there are more than 100 kids in the hockey program, and their attendance is up by 25%. Just keep making your sandwich there. The Shakakizics live across from the school, so they don't really have to leave until the bell rings. The kids, they're being raised by their grandmother, Irene. And I close it tight. They call me mom, I'm not grandma to them, because I've, I've had them since they were small, and yeah. So I'm not grandma to them, I'm, I'm mom. How come? because I'm the mom that they've known, that have raised them and looked after them, yeah. They know who their biological mom is, my daughter. They know who she is, you know, but they still call me mom. She then? Irene had four kids of her own. Her daughter had addiction problems. Oh. I guess it's safe to say that Sulakot and the First Nations all have, you know, we, there's a lot of drug and alcohol problems. That's one of the things that I really worry about my grandkids, especially with the problems that their mom had. It took a lot of tough love with my daughter. You know, it's, and you know, I wasn't ashamed. She went to the court system quite a bit, and that was because I'd call the OPP if I knew she was drinking. I'd rather have my daughter or any of my kids in jail rather than out and about not knowing where they're at. I don't think I would have loved her very much if I just let her go and get a call one day saying she's frozen outside. So Irene has another chance with her grandchildren and she's determined to keep them away from drugs and alcohol and in school. Every Thursdays, uh, we gotta go to hockey. Do you look forward to that? Skate around, do drills. And it helps you. It helps your legs skate faster. I'm ready to dive in the, wa the water. I look at my grandkids and I, you know, I kind of worry about, you know, what direction they're going to take as they get older. Okay, let's go. So I'm kind of hoping with the hockey, could be an incentive for them to keep in the sport there. Gotta go to the office, eh? Yeah. Yeah. So they know Wipe your feet. I want them to have a successful life. That's how much the hockey program means to Irene and really the whole town. Pull it all the way on. Okay, go. You feel like you're getting better? At the rink, it hits me. Ha-ha! Happy birthday. Thank you. 14? I watch Steve with the kids on the ice, and I'm sure he's a coach and he's teaching them skills. I know you can do it. I won't let you fall. But he might also be filling a hole that goes well beyond sport. Sometimes you do feel like a dad. I have kids that come and give me a hug every morning. I have my daughters don't do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
You can do it. Keep going. I won't let you fall, I promise. Okay. Keep going. I tried to have a connection with them, joke around with them, lay the hammer down when I have to. And with Jericho, it's really worked. When you get a kid that's on that path that you're fearful of and you can bring him back and he's excited about it, um, that's why I'm here. All right, so let's get our stuff off quickly upstairs when you're done. The ultimate goal of the hockey program, though the kids might not really know this, isn't to make them into hockey players, but to get them to graduate. Where do you live? This in a region with some of the lowest graduation rates in the country. If I graduate high school, I'll be the first one in my family to graduate high school. What's it like to say that? What do you think of that? Will that make you proud? Yeah, man. That is kind of... Okay. If I do graduate, I'll be proud. Okay. Ooh, come to think of it, yeah. Mm. That is kind of excited, exciting. When I get set to leave Sioux Lookout, there's Jericho, in front of the school, practicing his moves. These days, he keeps an orange ball in his pocket at all times. Nick Purden, CBC News, Sioux Lookout, Northwestern Ontario.